Hi, welcome back to our channel. There it is. My name is Jolie, and here we are, back, back at it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. All right. So what's uh, what's happening? Let's go. All right. So we're going to be reading here. This is the series we're reading now. There are many different books on this channel. So I want to remind you of that. They're all in the description below. So check those out if you are so called to, along with the steps, the working steps here. And um, yeah, I just read, or you can follow along with me if you'd like. Um, a little time for myself is the book we're reading. And so we're going to start uh, with the serenity prayer. I got votes to do both in the beginning. We're and then at the end, we'll do it as well. All right, so if you're there. All right, here we go. God grant us serenity to accept things that we can't change, to have courage, to change the things we can. Ourselves, right? And the wisdom to know the difference. Y'all set? Let's do it. So the date uh, we're reading is April 23rd. And um, I changed it a little bit. I added some more artwork that I've done and um, a moon painting that I'm working on. Let's see that. All right, so how are you? It's still sweater weather around here. Spring still has like the like you get the 70 degrees along with the 36, 34 degrees, which I love. I absolutely love it. And um, so I have my, my hot chocolate that's halfway dry. And yes, I am a cat person. It's kind of a cute little mug. I don't know where we got this. But you know, like people always give you mugs. They're like, oh, do you want these mugs? And I'm like, I can't say no. I shouldn't have, I, I've got a couple other little white ones from my mom. They're like the real, they're kind of thinner. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll use them or I'll just, maybe, you know, you can put them in a gift bag with things in them. So, yeah, I just thought of that. I think that might be cute. Like you can make little gifts out of them. So, I mean, a white mug is a white mug. They're, they're kind of cute. I wonder if we could paint on them. All right, so let's move on with my thoughts that have nothing to do with recovery. <laughs> oh, on one of my short videos, I posted just like a little synopsis of uh, the fashion show that I did with uh, with Macy's. Um, it's like, well, it was it was for um, a charity in uh, my town. It was for Sight for All. I thought was kind of cool because of how many glasses I have. It's um to give um they were raising money for um, eye exams and glasses for underprivileged families and children. So yeah, it was called the Mad Hatter, and it was very cute. So it was a good networking for for us and um uh, made some new friends. So that was fun to do. And I was present there spiritually, physically, mindfully <laughs> because of this my sobriety and because of al -Anon. All of it fit together. So lovely because I've gone to other um, things like that when I wasn't in recovery. And, you know, like I had a lot of anxiety and stress and I wouldn't remember a lot of stuff. I would still participate. Like I would donate a piece of art or go because of, you know, um, I was like an artist mentor for one charity, but I don't really remember a lot of it. Like it was just so like, ah, how does it go? You know, I would show up, but I wasn't, I was still really suffering. So, but this one was so different. I, I felt like it was just natural. And it was, yeah, I was grateful the whole time I was present. It was just like so different. All of what I've ever dreamt, like more than I can dream of 
how present I was. So anyhow, all good stuff. All right, so April 23rd, let's move on. <sighs> right, so um, page 114, if you're following along. Detachment with love has a hard concept to grasp, but after being hurt so many times, right, I felt like my only option was becoming indifferent to the alcoholic and addict in my life. I finally began to understand detachment with love when I was able to accept the true nature of this disease. I compare alcoholism and addiction to a fire. Fire is hot and volatile with the potential to hurt and burn. Of course, it can also be warm and beautiful. Learning to respect the natural properties of fire allows me the privilege of enjoying it without putting myself in it or in danger. This analogy, I came to realize I could still have a relationship with the alcoholic and addict in my life, even if they were still drinking and using. In Al-Anon, I have learned how to get close enough to feel the warmth and see the beauty while protecting myself from getting burnt. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. May I, may I also relate to this? I hope so. Detachment with love. I feel like that, that's been a theme in my head lately. So I feel grateful to my higher power for this reading today. So today's reminder, recognizing alcoholism as a disease helps me begin to detach with love, helps me to have compassion and detaching with love so that I can still be present, still have compassion, but not have it sewn into my skin unwillingly. So um, there's a book, I guess, called Detachment, which I don't, I've never read, but it's, there's a quote and it says, we can still love the person without liking the behavior, it's the behavior. We don't have to like the behavior. We don't have to accept that if it's if it's causing us um, physical danger, right? But we can radically accept the person and radically love the person without liking the behavior. Um, we can detach from that. Like, okay, that's. It's not, that's not because of me or I can't change them, but I can have peace in my own heart for my life. I feel like I can have more peace in my heart for my life when I can accept people for who they are and what they do. It's just, but I can, I can, I can, um, Detachment to me, in my experience, only my experience, is learning how to create healthy boundaries so that I can still participate in the relationships that are very important to me. Because even if they're not, you know, I mean, I'm not here to tell, say who's an alcoholic or not, but if their behavior is... unruly, um, they have the alcoholism or addiction behavior, those isms, like, you know, like things that are really hard to handle, <laughs> you know, family members who have been affected that aren't in recovery because um, they're not working on themselves and they're still in victim mentality. They're still blaming or, uh, not taking responsibility for their actions. They're not taking 
it's they're they're blaming others for their demise when it's when they're full adults and they need to take their responsibility for themselves, right? I could still love that person, have compassion for them, but I don't have to like that behavior. So that to me is recognizing alcoholism as a disease. And it helps me to begin to detach with the love. They actually, there is something that I read where um, it helps, you know, because people are like, what do you mean it's a disease? Like, you don't get mad at somebody if they have diabetes. Yes, you probably would be like, well, why didn't they take care of their diet and their exercise and blah, 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 right? But there's, when you start asking why about things and trying to control or blame a certain thing, it just is what it is. Like, People have their own life to live and the autonomy to do that, like allow, like I can't control other people and their actions and, and just really radically understanding that for myself creates peace and serenity in my life just for today at least. All right. So the question of the day is when do I have trouble separating the person from their behavior when it's affecting me, when I'm overwhelmed, when I'm being hurt or triggered because of something that I haven't healed or I'm not in the process of healing in myself. And so that's when I would take time to take time for myself, pause. Yeah. So that's my quick answer to that. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say for yours, if you have anything that comes up. And um, I'll keep it short. I don't know how long it was. I probably shared enough. So there it is. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, say the serenity prayer. And I will see you, God willing, tomorrow with another reading. And I just want to say again, thank you. For all your likes and subscribes, please do so if you haven't already. And share this content with somebody who may benefit. Right? So God, grant us the serenity. Nice deep breath in me. To accept the things that we can't change. To have courage to change the things we can. We can change ourselves. We can change our perceptions and our actions. We can't change anyone else's perceptions or their, we can't change their actions. As much as we believe we can, we cannot. There's like, no, that's, that's our alcoholism, disease thinking right now and on, right? So, um, and the wisdom to know the difference one day at a time. Little by little. All right. So, um, all right. Well, I love you. And uh, see you tomorrow, God willing. All right.